Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage F3 Rock Island locomotive from Marks. This is a locomotive that I picked up in an eBay lot a few months ago, and uh, it's in really bad shape. Uh, I actually suspect it was involved in a flood or something like that, just judging by all the stainage and like little spots of rust and things like that. Uh, the wheels are terribly oxidized, and uh, just overall, I suspect this thing has not run in a very long time. I would say probably at least 20 years, if not maybe 30 or 40. I mean, who really knows? Um, but uh, yeah, in any case, we're gonna try to get it working again. I think the likelihood of getting this thing working is definitely lower than most other things uh, that I work on on the channel because it's just in such bad shape I mean this drive is it's completely seized right now so uh, yeah it's gonna be a challenge but uh, why don't we give it a go and see if we can get this thing riding the rails again I think that would kind of be something special so yeah let's take it over the track we'll try to diagnose it although since the drive is seized we pretty much know that it's probably not gonna do anything but yeah, we'll try it out anyway so we're just going to set this thing up on the track and see if we can get anything from it at all. I really don't expect uh, it to do much because, uh, you know, the drive is completely seized, so it's definitely not going to run. And the wheels are so oxidized, I'd be surprised if it was even capable of picking up power. But you never know. It's always good to test these things out a little bit before working on them to see if you can discover anything. We did test this thing a couple months ago, but I don't remember what the results were. So it didn't probably do much of anything then. I doubt it will do much of anything now. So I'm putting eight volts in the track. Not seeing anything so far, um, as to be expected. Well, I'll be darned, it actually has some current draw. So the motor is trying to go inside this. Um, that's really quite surprising. Like, check this out. So you can see as it sits, uh, we're not getting anything, but when I wiggle it around just a little bit, you can see we're getting a bit of current draw. So there is power getting to that motor, uh, which is just, you know, that's absolutely remarkable that uh, despite how, you know, rusted everything is, uh, there's still some power flowing up through these wheels to the motor and it's trying to go. Just can't run because it's uh, seized really bad, but... Uh, you know, that's a sign of life, even despite how minimal it is. So let's bring it over to the workbench and see if we can get it running now. Well, that test has given me the slightest glimmer of hope that we'll get this thing uh, running again. Uh, it certainly doesn't mean we'll be able to, but at least, you know, to some extent there's something working in this thing. So yeah, let's crack it open and see if we can get it, get it going again. We've got some clips. Uh, there's three of them, which is kind of unusual. Most of these things just have a uh, clip on each side. Um, but yeah, there's three on each side. So this thing actually has a total of six clips. So Marks really did not want their shells coming off their locomotives, I guess. Anyway, here we are inside. Um, that's a pretty unusual looking weight. Got a light and everything. There's our motor. And uh, what is going on with that brush? That does not look great. It's like some sort of lubricants on it. Okay, um, so you can already tell it looks like somebody way over lubricated this. Yeah, that's really bad. And uh, I don't want to be too rough with it, but actually I can get it to turn over like a tiny bit manually, but this thing is, it's really locked up. Like uh, this should be turning fairly freely. So. Yeah, this thing needs so much work. I'm gonna try dropping the front truck out. I don't know how much this is gonna help, but it might allow us to access a couple of things. So there we are inside here, and we can actually. Huh, this front one's actually turning okay. I'm genuinely amazed by that. So it seems to just be this rear one, which is quite seized. Now, I definitely could be mistaken on this, but I believe, similar to Tyco Mantua locomotives, uh, these Marx drives cannot really be opened without drilling out rivets, which is not something I really want to do. Um, but uh, I think we can still probably get this thing unseized. Right here, I have a bit of WD-40. Now, WD-40 is not a good lubricant, uh, especially for model trains, but it is a decent penetrating oil. Uh, so I find sometimes when you have something that's seized, you can just drip a little bit of WD-40 and it will uh, help clean everything up and, and get it unlocked. This is not 
probably the best way to do things, but uh, it will work moderately well. So we'll strip a bit in there. And obviously I'm not spraying this stuff in there because it will go everywhere. And there's a lot of parts inside a locomotive that you don't want to get WD-40 on. I'm just dripping a little bit in there should help us out. So it's now about a minute later and it's amazing how much the WD-40 helped this thing get unseized. Like you can see, uh, I'm hardly putting any effort into turning this thing and it's all moving quite freely. So uh, this is really good because now we can actually uh, test out the motor and see if it can turn this all over under its own power, which is uh, actually what we're gonna do right now. So yeah, I'm quite happy to see that that, uh, that worked out. Certainly not a good solution. We need to put proper lubricants in it and clean it out, but um, this is a really good start. So we got our leads here and I'm connecting them up. We see sparks, so we know that this thing, power's flowing through it. It doesn't seem to want to go though. Sometimes I only remove one brush, but in this case, I'm gonna remove both so we can really clean them well. Also, it looks like a bit of the WD-40 did get on the commutator, which is what I wanted to avoid, but it doesn't really matter since we're gonna to try to clean that all out anyway. I'm just gonna clean these brushes off because they're still all covered in oil and crap. So yeah, that commutator is not looking so great. I mean, the WD-40 is definitely making it more oily, but uh, you can tell it was already in uh, pretty it was not in a clean state. Yeah. So I got most of the oil cleaned off of the commutator. I'm now gonna take the fiberglass pencil and clean off any uh, carbon deposits. All right, so we got that looking a little bit better. We're now gonna take uh, one of these little uh, picks here. And we're just going to clean out the gaps on the commutator. This is super important when working pretty much on any uh, DC motor, uh, just because these little commutators, when these little gaps get all carboned up, um, it pretty much causes shorts and it makes the motor super inefficient and uh, can even burn out the commutator. So you really want to make sure that you clean these out. I've had locomotives which have completely stopped working just because these have gotten so dirty, the motors can't uh, turn over properly. So I just cleaned up this brush and uh, overall it's looking pretty good now. A uh, little bit of the history of this locomotive has been revealed through this though, because you can see there is hardly any wear on this brush, which means this locomotive was not run a whole lot. And it's the exact same thing on the other brush. And it looks like this brush was actually sitting a little bit low because uh, the wear is all on one side instead of being in the middle. So we'll see if we can correct that. Um, but yeah, overall it does not look like this was a high mileage locomotive. So we're now gonna put the brushes back in. And uh, sometimes these are easy to get in. Uh, this is a very, these Pittman motors are very common, so you'll see this kind of layout quite often. One thing that's very important with this style of motor and similar ones is that you make sure that the spring in the middle uh, has an insulator at least on one side, because uh, often these things, uh, you know, will get lost, they'll come off, or they'll just kind of crumble, and that will cause a short circuit. So always make sure those are intact. And uh, yeah, we'll just get this brush in as well. Yeah, some, some brushes I think you can insulate on both sides, but others you can't because in some cases the power flows through here. So in this case, I think that's how it works because you can see the screw is connected to the frame which is positively or negatively charged. And then there was a wire connected here. So we know that uh, this is supposed to be completely isolated. Now, hopefully uh, that we've got that cleaned up, this thing will run. Let's have a look here. Oh, come on. It is really trying to turn. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's really trying to turn over. It's just struggling to get started, but there we go. It's running. Not perfectly consistently, but uh, it's kicking. I feel little bits of stuff flying out. There's definitely some rust or something, I think, on one of these plates. So I'm absolutely thrilled that this motor works. I was a little unsure as to whether or not there might have been another problem in the beginning when we were trying to get this thing started. 
uh, but it seems like it just needed to get moving again, maybe for the uh, brushes to get seated properly or something like that. Uh, but yeah, this is again uh, another uh, testament to uh, commutator cleaning because uh, this is another drive that was not turning over just because it had a really dirty commutator and it was probably shorted uh, because there was so much carbon in between the plates on the commutator. Uh, anyway, I think we can probably clean uh, this drive up now with some alcohol and uh, yeah, then we can uh, get the wheels all sorted out, get some better lubricant into this thing and uh, yeah, then we can try reassembling it and uh, hope for the best. Before I go using alcohol on it, I'm going to just try to manually scrape off all this old grease and stuff just because uh, it's so nasty. The alcohol is not going to be able to handle this on its own. Yeah, that is some wicked stuff. Look at that. So now I'm just going to try to scrub all the old lubricants and everything off. The WD-40 should have helped uh, get rid of the old, uh, you know, grease and stuff on these gears. So now we just need to get rid of both and we should be in pretty good shape. Just washing off some of the parts here and I just wanted to show just how nasty uh, it is inside here. There's so much old grease, it's not even funny. Just look at all that. Well, that all came out looking uh, quite a bit better, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to take on the shell. Looks like mostly uh, dust, but uh, I really wonder if this thing was involved in a flood or something. I don't know, just the way everything sort of looks just really points to that. Uh, but yeah, I'll try uh, cleaning it off with some soap and water, see if that will fix it up a bit. So I was just about to bring this shell upstairs to clean it, and I thought, I wonder what the inside of the shell is looking like. And you see this side, it's a little bit dirty. But I don't even want to know what all of this is. Like, this is just disgusting. Uh, I'm honestly going to take this thing outside because I don't know if that's um, mouse remnants or uh, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to be cleaning this in the kitchen sink for sure. This is definitely one of the dirtiest engines I've ever worked on. All right, well, I'm now finished cleaning the shell. I have to say it actually uh, came out looking a little bit better than I was expecting, which I was happy to see. I did unfortunately end up stripping off some of the letters and paintwork, but uh, it really needed a good scrubbing, so uh, there wasn't really too much of a choice. Uh, but uh, yeah, it didn't come out too bad. Uh, the inside is looking significantly better. Uh, this was not a whole lot of fun to clean. This has got to be one of the most ratchet locomotives I've ever worked on before. Uh, there was some pretty wicked stuff in there. So yeah, I had to spray that down with the gardening hose pretty well. And uh, yeah, I went at it with a toothbrush and a lot of soap. And washed my hands very thoroughly after. Because yeah, I, I just hate to know even what that stuff was. But it, it can't be good. So yeah, uh, all the old lubricants and everything else uh, that were also in there are pretty much all gone now. So yeah. Pretty happy about that. You now I just need to uh, re-lubricate all the components and uh, yeah, maybe start reassembling this locomotive. Before we start reassembling this, I just want to say too, I scrubbed uh, all these components down as best as I could with a ton of alcohol. And you can see I got uh, all the crap out of the gears and uh, even down here, I tried to scrub all that out. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a massive improvement over what it was. And uh, yeah, there's there's nothing significant left over in uh, either of these trucks now. So they're uh, they're turning really, really well. And this is unlubricated too, keep in mind, because of course the alcohol removed all the uh, WD-40 as you can see. So yeah, th these are ready to uh, be re-lubricated. So anyway, uh, I think we'll start by just putting these uh, back together because of course there is uh, a drive link between them, which should also be lubricated. So I guess we'll put that in there. And then uh, I'll start by lubricating this truck. For these teeth, I actually will put some oil on them just so that they're adequately lubricated because these are fairly wide teeth. So there is a fair amount of surface area. So let's put some there, put a little on each of these. And uh, I'll put some in here as well. And we'll lubricate behind that gear. And uh, the teeth on this one don't need to be lubricated because these ones don't actually connect to anything. They're just there because I think they copied the truck for both sides, which is actually a really smart idea. And then uh, that should be good. I'll put some grease in these. These uh, don't actually need as much grease as many other types of old locomotives because these have plastic gears. And the good thing about plastic gears is that unlike metal gears, they can use a thinner lubricant. So, uh, you know, you, you should put a relatively good amount of grease, but with metal gears, you definitely need to put a lot more. Uh, what's important though is you put a decent amount of oil just so that there is, you know, some layer of film between uh, each, uh, the, you know, the teeth of the gears and the worm gears. So, 
Yeah, it should be good. And we're just going to turn that over manually and uh, make sure it spreads out well. Put a little more in here because I'm not seeing it. And then we just repeat the process on this truck over here. So I've now got uh, the oils all mixed up with the grease inside the gearboxes pretty well. And you can see these are turning really well now. And uh, same goes for that truck. And uh, I'm now just going to put a little bit of conductive lubricant in each of the bearings for the wheels. And this will lubricate as well as uh, improve the electrical connectivity. So it makes both, thing, uh, both things a little bit better. So we'll do the same on this truck. And uh, I'm also going to lubricate the bearing on the motor. The reason I use conductive lubricant to lubricate these bearings is that if a little bit of uh, lubricant sprays off of here and it gets on the commutator, it's not going to affect it negatively uh, because uh, if you put, I, I don't lubricate my commutator, some people do, uh, but what you don't want is just regular oil getting on these things because it's going to gum them up. At least conductive lubricant, if a little bit sprays on there, it shouldn't be too bad. I'm also going to get the back bearing uh, as well just so that the motor can turn a little bit better so that should help improve it and uh, yeah now we can pretty much I think uh, reassemble the uh, the motor um, or the whole drive system I mean there we go so that's all good this one looks to already be clipped in should have checked I don't know if you can get this in you probably need to unclip the trucks actually for this part. Yeah, will it stretch out enough? I don't know. Hmm, I guess not. All right, so yeah, now we pretty much have the whole drive back together. We just need to uh, get it all wired up. I am going to check to uh, see if this light works. In fact, we'll, uh, we'll test that right now. I'm kind of curious. It's possible. Let's have a look at the bulb. Yeah, it doesn't look great. I don't know if the wire is still intact, but we'll test it out anyway. I'll be darned, it does still work. Never underestimate the quality of marks. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Well, let's just solder all this back together, I guess, then, and we'll be hopefully good to go. The original red wire in this locomotive was in much worse shape than I thought. I tried to strip it to, uh, you know, solder back on here, and basically it kind of just crumbled. So I got this uh, new red wire, and I've also got these uh, new wire strippers. Big thanks to DB Tech. Anyway, we're going to uh, try to get this new wire in here, and it should work out all right. For this part, I'm actually going to remove the brush, and it's for a simple reason. I don't really want to be soldering close to plastic, because with the spring pushing against this and this getting hot, it will probably just melt right through. So we'll lift it out just so that we can properly solder it on uh, without risking uh, breaking this plate, because uh, I think it's something I've done at least once before. So this thing is pretty much all ready to go. The only other thing I want to do is clean the wheels off because uh, they're still mighty dirty. Uh, a little bit of the grime actually did come off when I was just scrubbing this all down, but uh, they still obviously need a lot of work. So um, we're going to give this thing some power and we're going to actually kind of let this thing uh, clean itself off a bit. So we just do that, get it running, and then you take a track cleaner and just hold it up and let it do its job. You can see just how much grime we're actually coming through because this is taking a bit of time to get down to the metal, but and you don't want to push too hard uh, on this. Just let it scrub through because you don't want to strain the motor too much. But you can see that's quite an improvement. Well, those wheels are not looking too bad in my opinion, so I think this thing is ready to go back together. Let's do it. All right, looks like this thing is ready to go over to the track for testing. Let's see if she'll run. 
Well, it's now the moment of truth. Let's see if our efforts have paid off. Will this thing start and run under its own power? Let's find out. Oh yeah, look at that. We've got a runner. Wow, okay. I'm very happy with that. Well, let's, uh, let's, I don't know. Let's let it charge around the layout, I guess. Yeah, it's not the quietest one out there, but these old Marks engines tend not to be quiet no matter how well you lubricate them, but uh, it's running fairly well. It's not the most efficient out there, but hey, it's doing it. And I mean, considering what we started off with, this is such an improvement. I wasn't even all that optimistic we were going to get this thing running, and uh, here it is charging around the layout. So yeah, that's absolutely great. I wish I could hook up some train cars to it, but uh, it only has a front coupler. Let's try slowing it down, let's see. This, I think it has a three-pole motor in it, so it's probably not going to have the best low speed, but you know, that's really not that bad. Yeah, okay, it's cogging a little there, but you know what? Overall, uh, this is, yeah, this is running really, really well, I think, for what we started off with. So, yeah, pretty happy with that. So, yeah, anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.